Nox Game Design. January 2022, Dykstra's Algorithm. Welcome everyone to Nox Game Design for January 2022. So this month we're going to, going to be talking about Dykstra's Algorithm. So Dykstra's Algorithm is something that I learned about in college. Uh, I'll be talking about the usage of Dykstra's Algorithm. I'm going to walk through a couple of examples. And then I'm going to show a, a small app that I wrote that implements Dykstra's Algorithm. So, so first of all, what is Dykstra's Algorithm? Well, first of all, it'll from a... A point on a graph on a selected node it can find the shortest path to any other node on that graph and a, a graph is basically just a collection of nodes these could be like the uh, points on a map and things like that that are connected by edges and basically an edge is just a connection so if you think of like a subway system each of the train stops are connected by a line so those are kind of like the edges and the actual train uh, stations are the nodes so when we use Dijkstra's algorithm, most of the time we're thinking about a, a weighted graph. So each of the distances, each of the edges has a value. Now that may not necessarily be distance. I guess usually it is, but I guess if you're looking at like a traffic map, there may be some lanes that are slower. If you're thinking about a game and you're going through a certain path, maybe there's obstacles or things that will slow you down through a certain path, which would give that path or edge a greater value. But in most cases, it may just be the distance between the nodes. So in this case, we're going to be talking about an undirected graph. So the distance to get from point node A to node B is going to be the same to get from node B back to node A. Uh, there may be some cases when you have a uh, directed graph but uh, in this case we're just talking about undirected and as i mentioned uh basically for any point any node on your graph you'll be able to find the shortest path to all the other nodes now one thing to be aware of this isn't necessarily what they call the minimum spanning tree it isn't the shortest distance between all the nodes uh, or the minimum weighted graph uh, it's just from a specific point to all other points. And that's where you get into talking about runtime complexity, uh, things like the traveling salesman problem. Uh, if you're trying to find the shortest distance between all nodes in a graph, uh, which becomes uh, computationally hard. Uh, and I did a talk, I don't know, I guess it was a year or two ago, about uh, big O and runtime and things like that. So I'd refer back to that talk if you're interested in learning more about that. Uh, but it, there is a way to find the minimum spanning tree using Prim's algorithm. Um, actually, I did a talk. Go back and look at the Mazes talk, and you'll find more information about Prim's algorithm there. So why is this useful? As I mentioned earlier, finding uh, the disk point, a starting point, or starting node, and all the other nodes. Well, if you're playing a real-time strategy game, kind of like the original Warcraft or Starcraft, and you have a unit, and it's got to go through certain waypoints, uh, but you have multiple options, then you can find the shortest point or shortest path to get to your destination. Uh, if you have a sandbox game like a Grand Theft Auto or a Sleeping Dogs or in games like that, uh, if you want to have a pointer that tells the player where to go from the current position to the destination objective, then it'd be useful for that because in some cases when you have a sandbox game, you got to go over a bridge and there isn't any way to get over to the other side. So you can't just say the shortest distance from point A to point B is a straight line. You got to go over a bridge and obstacles and things like that. As I mentioned, intersections on a map uh, and also uh, tunnels between a train station. And also if you're just doing like a simple board game, kind of like a candy land or something like that, you have multiple paths that you can go through. You can use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path to your destination. So here's an example. Here's my graph. The circles with the letters in them are your nodes, and the lines between those circles are your edges, and the green numbers are the weighted values of those edges. So those could be distances or time or and things like that. And as I did mention in the, in the note at the bottom, not to scale. <laughs> so here it is. So Dijkstra's algorithm. So you have to pick, one of the conditions is you have to pick a starting position. So you're going to have like a collection of distances or weights. 
Those are going to be associated with all your nodes in the graph. You're going to set all those to infinity. Um, in, in some implementations, you may just use like a, a 9999 or maybe a negative 1 represents infinity, things like that. So you pick your starting node, and in your distance set, or in the implementation I did, I just used a hash table that for each node, it gives me the distance or the current or the current value uh, for that for that node. So you pick the starting position, you set it to zero, then all the other ones are going to be infinity. So you have a shorted shortish path set as well. The the nodes that you have selected. Uh, so it's going to be empty to start out with. So while this selected set does not contain all the nodes, you're going to repeat this process. So the first thing you're going to do is select every, and through each iteration, you're going to select out of that distance array, you're going to select the one with the lowest value. So we, currently we have zero and all infinity. So we're going to pick that one, the starting one that has zero. Then we're going to add that to our, like our shortest path uh, collection. And once you select that and add it to your collection, then you're going to update all the adjacent nodes to that one uh, with the minimum of either its current value or uh, the, the, the total distance to that node from the, from the last selected node. So, so we're going to pick A. So I have it right here in red. We're going to pick A because it's zero. Here's the initialized over here. We're going to pick A, set it to zero. So then we're going to look at our distance graph. So A hat is adjacent to B, C, and F with values 2, 3, and 7 respectively. So each of those values, 2, 3, and 7, are less than the infinity values, which I have listed here as I and F, uh, that they're currently set to. So here in this next graph right here, you see we're going to pick A, we're going to, uh, denote that by being a red circle. So we're going to set C to 3, F to 7, and B to 2. So our new distance set is... So once you pick a node, you basically don't care about it anymore. So I'm just going to represent that as an X. So A is we don't care anymore. It's already in our selected set. I have selected set right here on the side. So basically B goes to 2, C goes to 3, then D... E were unchanged, so those are going to be still infinity. F we set to seven, and G it was unchanged because it's not adjacent. It's going to remain as infinity as well. So here again on the right side, this is just our distance graph as a reference up here. So the next set step, we're going to look at the remaining distances uh, in the distance set right here. Then we're going to pick the lowest value, the node with the lowest value out of that set. So we got a B is 2, C is 3, and F is, it was 7. So the lowest out of those is 2. B was 2. So we're going to pick B, add that to our selected set. So now in our selected set, we have A and B. So our path is currently just A to B. So I denote that by a red line. And we pick B so that the B is going to be red. So B is adjacent to A and F. So A, we've already visited. We don't care anymore. But F is still a possibility. So F, we're going to look at it, and the value was 7. So we're going to look at it and say, okay, B is 2, and the distance from B to F is 3. So we're going to add 2 plus 3 is 5. Then compare that value, 5, with the current value, weighted value of f, which is 7. So 5 is less than 7, so we're going to change f to 5 now. So in the next step, we're going to look at the remaining values. So we got a 3, infinity, infinity, 5, infinity. So the least out of those is 3. So we're going to pick c, which is has a value of 3. So on our selected set, we have a, b, and c. We're going to look at the adjacent... Um, nodes to C. So C is adjacent to A. We've already picked A. We don't care anymore. So F is the only other adjacent value. So F uh, is currently 5. So we're going to look at, hey, C is currently 3, and the distance from C to F is 1. So we're going to add 1, 2, 3, which gives us 4. 
and 4 is less than 5. So since it's less, we're going to update the value of f. So we're going to set it to 4. So now we got distance values of d is infinity, e is infinity, f is 4, and g is infinity. And our current path is a to b and a to c. So out of those values, the only one that isn't infinity is f. So we're going to pick f. So f is adjacent to c. We've already picked it. We don't care. It's adjacent to a. We've already picked it. We don't care. It's adjacent to b. We've already picked that one. Actually, it's adjacent to all of them. <laughs> it's right there in the center. So the only ones that we haven't picked so far are d, e, and g. So we're going to update all those values. So f is currently a 4. So f to d is 1. So we add 4 plus 1. It gives us 5. 5 is less than infinity, so we're going to set d to 5. We're going to do 4 plus f to e is 2, so that gives us 6. So 6 is less than infinity, so we're going to set e to 6. And then the distance from f to g is 4, so we're going to take the value of f4, add 4 to that, gives us 8. So 8 is less than infinity, so we're going to set g to 8. So out of that set, the next least value is five so five is currently set to d so we're going to pick d um, and then we're going to add that to our set so our current path is a to c a to b c to f and f to d so d is adjacent to f and e we've already picked f we don't care about it anymore then we're going to look at e so e is currently six um, so the current value of D is 5, then we're going to add 1, which gives us 6. So 6 is equal to 6, so we, we don't care. We just don't update it. Um, so now the only two remaining nodes not in the set are E and G, with, with values of 6 and 8. So the next step, we're going to pick the least of 6 and 8, which is E. So E has a value of 6. We're going to add... E to our selected set. So we're going to have all the all of them in the selected set except for G. Uh, so we're going to keep going through this until the selected set contains all of the nodes, and that's our stopping point. You can, alternatively, you can set an end node, and in that case, you would just stop when you've selected that end node. If you don't want to know the uh, distance from the starting point to all the other points. If you just want to know how to get to a certain distance, which would be the case in many games, if you just want to know how to get to a certain point, you would just stop when you get to that end node, when that end node is selected. So what we're going to do, go ahead and continue the algorithm. E, we selected E, and um, we're going to update its adjacent cell. So we've already picked F, we don't care. We've already picked D, we don't care. So the only one that we haven't picked is G. So G has a current value of 8. So E has a value of 6. So 6 plus 6 is 12. So we're going to look at that and say, hey, 12 is greater than 8. So we're not going to update um, G to 12. So in the, the last case, then, then we looked at the remaining values. The only one that's left is 8. Uh, so you're going to pick G, add it to the selected set. So now you have all of the nodes selected. So we end the algorithm. Uh, so our end uh, graph here is A to B, A to C to F, then from F to D, F to E, and F to G. Um, but there's one additional thing you have to do if you're actually implementing this and you actually want to keep track of the path. You have to keep track of the node that you're coming from, from each of these. So that's something they don't, if you read about Dijkstra's algorithm, sometimes they don't put that in there. So if you actually want to know the path, sometimes you actually got to keep track of the node that you came from. And here's just an example, like I mentioned earlier, using Dijkstra's algorithm doesn't necessarily give you the minimum spanning tree. Um, it gives you 
the dist the shortest path from a select the starting point to all the other nodes. So if we this is the one that we just did, we started at A, and here's our graph, the one that we just did. But if I went and I did this starting at G, you get kind of a, a different graph. You get G to E and G to F, then F to C to A, then F to B, then F to D. So it's a little bit different here. And actually, I, I did this as well starting from F, and you get a, another different graph starting at F. So um, that's why it doesn't do the minimum spawning tree. Here's another example, and I, I'm going to show uh, the tool that I wrote. I did this in Unity. Uh, I'll put the code out there, and I'll try to actually post this on on my site so you can, so people can actually run this. Let's go ahead and maximize right here. So what I did is, if you have a text file, I basically have you know, these values in text files. Yeah, so this is the example that we just did, but it's in textual format. So basically, we have the starting node, or actually just node pairs and the distance between those pairs right there. So I did that for the example that we just did. Uh, I found another example using numbered. So this works with letters or numbers, numbered nodes. And also I did like the real world example, which I just briefly showed there. Uh, I looked at actual distance between cities in the Knox area. So I have like Rockwood, Harriman, Kingston, Oak Ridge, Wartburg, Lenore City, Clinton, Knoxville, and Maryville. So I kind of went through and calculated the distances, just just typed it in in the search engine online and found the distances. Now these are this is like driving distance. This isn't the direct line. So this is kind of represents what you would see in a real game where you're you could potentially be driving around twisty roads around a mountain or something like that or over a bridge so it isn't necessarily the the shortest distance between the the two points but yeah let's just go back and look at the first example so maximize so i got the first example in data one i added it so you can select the starting node a b c d or g e f or g so I'll pick A, and you kind of just got to manually walk through this. You just click Next Step, and this basically does the same thing that I just talked about. You start set A to zero, and the rest are infinities. You select A, update the adjacents, and here's in yellow are the values after you update the adjacents. Then you click Next Step, it'll add it to the path. Then it'll pick the shortest from the remaining, so you have B, and then we update the adjacent, and then Next Step next step and next step so as you click through next step it's going to select from uh the ones that are remaining and add those to your selected and then once you have them all selected then it's going to say done and it gives you your path over here a to b a to c c to f f to d f to e and f to g um so i got it where you can actually press reset and let's go select g do next step. So we're going to set G to zero and the rest to infinity. Do next step. So it's going to update the adjacents and then pick the smallest from the adjacents. So yeah, after you after it says done, you're done. So yeah, I could have it where it just automatically calculates all these, but I have the, have it where you got to press next step so that you actually see the process. So this is more of a learning tool and not specifically for finding. I wouldn't use this like in a game or anything like that, um, but you could. And oh, by the way, uh, if anyone's interested, uh, I'll, I'll put the code for this out there probably on Git on my GitHub. The one thing that I didn't do, which I thought would be cool, is to have a graph showing the graph update, kind of like what I walked through earlier. But laying out nodes in a connected graph, that's a whole nother computing problem <laughs> with I don't know, probably varying levels of uh, complexity, which I didn't want to get into implementing, like spacing out nodes and stuff like that. That that can be a very difficult problem there. So, But if anybody wants to add that, you're definitely welcome to do that. So yeah, there it is for G. So that's the exact th same thing that I showed over here in this one. So we got G to F, F to C, F to D, G to E, F to B, and C to A. Did you get F to C? Yeah, F to C. But like I was saying earlier, the interesting thing, let's reset this. If you pick F and step through this, 
you get a completely different graph. So basically, if you're starting at F, then all the adjacents are going to be the closest one. And then you just got A. Well, actually, A isn't. A is adjacent to F, and it's... Yeah, so you go to F to C, C to A. But yeah, it, it's still a different graph. So it all depends on your starting location. Um, here's another one, that one with numbers. I kind of found this example online. And I just did this just to verify that my program was working correctly. But that's your graph right there. And finally, I like this one, the Knox Cities. So it might be kind of hard to see, but we got all the cities up here. And they're in alphabetical order. So let's start out in Rockwood and do the next step. So you got all the cities set to infinity. We pick Rockwood because it's zero. And this is basically this graph right here. I wish I could show both of these at the same time. So basically, we're going to update all the adjacents. Harriman and Kingston are adjacent to Rockwood, 10 and 12. So we're going to pick Harriman at 10, then update all the adjacents to Harriman, Oak Ridge. Yeah, actually, the Oak Ridge was 10 plus, tw yeah, 10 plus 21 gives us 31. But you could have went the same way from Rockwood to Kingston, Oak Ridge. But since we picked Harriman, then we're looking at 10 plus 21. Okay. So the remaining adjacents are Lenore City and Oak Ridge. So we're going to pick Oak Ridge at 31 because 31 is less than 33. We're going to update all the adjacents to Oak Ridge. So we've got Clinton at 45, Knoxville 56. Then both Lenore City and Wartburg at, no, Lenore City at 33 and Wartburg at 53. So we're going to pick Lenore City at 33. So we're going to add a connection to, from Kingston to Lenore City. So that's what I was talking about. you got to keep track of the previous one where you came from. If you don't keep track of that, you won't know where you came from. And then pick Clinton at 45. Then we got Knoxville, Maryville, and Wartburg both at 53. So we picked Maryville just because it was first. But Maryville's current value is 53. So 53. So, okay, so 53 plus 18. So 56 is less than 71, so we're going to keep it at 56. So then uh, the remaining, we're going to pick, pick Wartburg at 53, because 53 is less than 56. And then finally, we're going to pick Knoxville at 56. So yeah, you can do that for many of the other cities. You can start in, say, let's just start in Knoxville. And you just, yeah, there's a little bit of problem with it going down. <laughs> Spanning all the way to the bottom. Just click through it, and yeah, you get a def definite different graph depending on your starting position, right there. Yeah, so I'll just walk through the code. Most of the code is in this Dijkstra's demo. Large that. So basically, I have like this restart that just initializes everything. Got to load data. This loads the data resource from the text file and parses all the nodes and edges out. I got a function called getter create node. So basically it's gonna you pass in a string, value that's read, and it's gonna drop down to um, get or create node. So if that node with that name already exists, then it just returns that node. Otherwise it'll create a new node with that, that string as its name. So we're going to create a collection of nodes and a collection of edges. So a node basically just has a name. And it's also got a compare to. So when we're sorting that list of nodes, we're going to use compare to. I think this is part of system I comparable. So if you're sorting the list, then you got to implement this system I comparable to tell it how to compare a list of node values. And then we're going to have a two string. So when we're printing this out, we don't have to dot stir name or whatever we just print out that object so then the edge is just i just use an array of nodes of size two so we're going to have node one node two then the distance between those two nodes pretty simple stuff there so yes yeah, so we're going to have a list of nodes and a list of edges i'm going to go ahead and sort those 
nodes just because in our data set you don't know what order those nodes are going to be in um so the reason i did this is because i'd read the nodes in and i'd get like f f before b or something like that which didn't look right so i went ahead and implemented that sorting uh, that comparison to do the sorting so yeah we got a display manager that handles display i mean it's it's nothing special it just updates the output uh, display clearing the output handles the drop down getting the value of the selected drop down or getting the node from the selected drop down and, and and disabling once you start it you don't want people changing the starting node so that's what that does right there yeah so basically what we're going to do we're going to loop through all the nodes so i should have had more comments in this but so for each node and the nodes we're going to set so I got a hash of distances, so that's our distance set. So I'm gonna set each node to infinity. So basically it's it's a hash or a dictionary uh, with the key being a node and an int for the distance. Um, and then I also have a dictionary. Like I was saying earlier, if you want, you want to be able to track your path, you gotta have a, also have this hash of uh, sources. So from each node, you know where you're coming from. Then I have what the list of nodes that have been selected from the algorithm. So yeah, we set them all to infinity. Um, then for each edge, yeah, just, just this is just for display right here. So every time I press the step button, so if it's the very first step, then we're gonna check and see what the selected starting node is and set that one to zero. And then we're gonna freeze the selected the drop down for selecting starting node so while the list of selected nodes doesn't equal the total number of nodes then th then we're going to do the algorithm uh so this is just output here so so for each of the nodes in the list of nodes um if it's not a selected node then we're going to check and see if it is the node with the lowest value so, so we're, we select the node with the lowest value. So initially we're gonna set the node with the lowest value to null. So if we're looking at a node that, uh, so if the, the node lowest is currently no, null, then we're looking at a node that has a value, then we're gonna pick that value, the one with the value. Otherwise, if the, the low the no lowest node has a value and the node that we're looking at has a lower value then we're going to set that to the selected node the node lowest uh so that's how we pick the the value the uh the node with the lowest value we're going to add that to the list of selected nodes then we're just going to go ahead and sort that list of selected nodes so they come out in correct order on the display. Um, this is just keeping track. Yeah, this is just displaying the path, the current path. And um, so, you're, so then we're gonna split, display all the selected nodes by going through the list of selected nodes and just printing those out. And then we're gonna print out the adjacent nodes to the one that we just selected. So th this is where we're gonna loop through all the edges and we're gonna find each adjacent node. So we've got node adjacent equals all null. So we're gonna look at each edge and we're gonna look at both nodes in each edge uh, for the entire system. And then if one of those two nodes equals the node that we just selected, then we're going to verify whether we need to update or not the, the distance in the other node for that edge. So yeah, after we loop through there, we're gonna say, okay, if a uh, node adjacent, if it's if the adjacent node is not null and that adjacent node is not already in the list of selected nodes, then we're gonna check if we need to update it. So the way we do that is for that 
adjacent node. We're going to look at the hash distances, then add the current distance for that edge uh, from the node that you're coming from. So if adding those two nodes together, if that's less than the current distance value for that node, then that's when we're going to update the distance value for that adjacent node. So that's what we're doing right here. And, and then we just update. If we do update that adjacent node, then we're going to set the, the node that is coming from to that, that the one that we just picked. Yeah. It's kind of hard to follow, but, but it makes sense once you're actually implementing this. It's kind of hard to Describe in words. Okay, so for all the nodes, uh, yeah, this so this is just for output right here. So we're just uh, showing all of the updated distance is right here. So we're just going to go through all the nodes and display the updated distances for all the nodes that aren't currently picked. And then if we selected all the nodes. The list of selected node count equals the list of node count. Then we're going to say we're done. And then we're going to not allow the user to do any more steps. Because this is only allowed if, if the list selected count is less than the list of nodes. Otherwise, you start getting errors. <laughs> if, if you try to pick out of the available nodes and there aren't any nodes available left. So yeah, that's basically it. I just got it like this thing right here for formatting the int value. So I have a constant way up here. I just set infinity to a constant 999. Uh, the reason I did that, there is a math f dot infinity, but it's a float and I didn't want to get into all the casting, all that. So I just have it where get string value for the int. If it's anything like, if it's less than that infinity value, then it'll just print that value. Otherwise, it's going to print I and F. If you want to get fancy, you could do a little snake infinity symbol. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Display manager isn't much. I think I showed that earlier. It's just printing and clearing, things like that. Pretty simple program. So, oh, and by the way, is like, yeah, you just got to make sure you pull, you put all your text data into uh text files in your resources folder then i got this list over here where you can just drag those into this um this list in your inspector for the data so if you want to add a new one you just add using the plus symbol right there but oh by the way you just got to go into the ca canvas and go down to um, drop down data and add a new option here as well. That's where you add the options. So these values kind of line up with these text input values over here. And oh, by the way, the starting node is automatically calculated for you. So you don't have to change anything for that. So anyway, that's that's basically Dijkstra's algorithm. I hope people find it useful. Uh, um, I'm always amazed by people who have like computer science degrees and they tell me they've never heard of Dijkstra's algorithm before. I'm like, okay, what what computer science program did you go through? Because <laughs> I remember like hearing it in, in multiple classes that I was in, like theory class and algorithms class. I think they actually taught us to it, taught it to us in like the basic intro to programming almost, I believe. But I remember hearing Dijkstra's algorithm many times, and I think it is useful, especially if you're dealing with a game, with a map, um, and trying to find shortest distances. Uh, something I prob probably should have used in more of my games, but, but haven't. Um, there are other algorithms, like I mentioned earlier, other algorithms such as PRIMS and A star for finding paths through mazes and things like that. And I think some of those are, like I think the A star is actually built into Game Maker. So that, that might be a better alternative, like for beginner, beginning game programmers instead of implementing uh, Dijkstra's algorithm yourself. But uh, it, it, it isn't that hard. So, uh, one thing I had been working on is uh, like the advent of code, 
game programming competitions and a lot of the problems in it uh, they they do have like Dijkstra's algorithm problems. So if you're if you're competitively programming, it's definitely a, a good tool to know to you, be able to use. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for January 2022. Appreciate everyone out there watching the videos and listening, and plan on being back in a month.